What's your name? Jesse. Hayden, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes, you want to start by stating your position on abortion? I am pro-choice. Very much so, I would consider myself. For all nine months, sir? Um, for up until the viability line, past that I won't state my opinions, because again, as a man, I feel like that's really not any of like my place to be delving into. And that's the argument that I'd like to make, is that like we as two men without uteruses shouldn't really be debating a topic for or that only affects a certain group of people that is completely different than us okay so you made two arguments one is that i can't oppose abortion because i'm a man and the second is like viability um let me first kind of address the second one that i can't oppose abortion because i'm a man um so women don't have penises they can still say rape is wrong i don't have a uterus i can still say women murdering their children in their uterus is wrong do you agree yeah, actually, I would. Okay, so if we've addressed the second part. Now let's address the first part, which is viability, correct? Yes. Okay, so uh, one week old child outside the womb. Parents don't feed it, starves to death. I would argue the parents are guilty of neglect and murder of that child. Would you agree? Yeah, I would. Okay, yes. and the reason is that parents have a moral obligation to provide a safe and healthy environment for the child to develop. Agreed? Correct. Okay, so parents have a moral obligation for their children to provide a safe and healthy environment for their children to develop inside of. Yes. I would apply that to the unborn as well. Okay. Agreed? Uh, that's where I disagree. Why do you think parents don't have a moral obligation to provide a safe and healthy environment for their children in the womb, but they do have that obligation outside the womb? Because when does that obligation fall into play? And, okay, this is where I didn't want to speak on post-viability, because obviously post-viability is where it gets a bit dodgy as to whether it's morally correct to go through with an abortion or not. And so before viability, I would argue that it's not at all the parents job to worry and concern for that kid's safety because that kid isn't a kid yet it's still an well, it's, unborn it is incapable of living outside of that womb well it's still an innocent human being right it is a forming human being it's not quite a human being yeah no, i would, is, consider, it a human I would being. consider a human being when it is capable of living on its own outside of another being well that would be like 13 capable of living on its own without the help of another human being that's like 13 14 biologically living like when it is a capable, biologically functional being, capable of living on its own and sustaining itself, and sure, yeah, kids. That's like 13, 14 though. Yeah, but that is, you're obviously living before you're 13, and I would argue that you're not really a living being until you are viable. Why not? Because and real quick, real quick. Yeah. Um, if you're not a living being until you're viable at like 20, 24 weeks, how do you get there? You have to be alive before that. And you are Correct. a human being before that. Because once sperm and egg meet, you now have a new unique human being. That's just scientifically accurate. It is a forming human being. No, it is a human being. It is developing just like a toddler's developing into a teenager, just like a teenager's developing into an adult. But it is a human being. Yes, but it is a being that is required to stay inside of another being to survive. Kind of like our mitochondria, but we don't consider our mitochondria separate than ourselves, even though it has a completely separate DNA Well, a, a body cell is different than an embryo, right? For example, like say that I like lose cells on my finger, right? I'm not committing like murder, but the child in the womb is the whole, right? We're confusing parts with holes. The parts of my fingers that are cells, that's part of the whole organism, that is me. The embryo is the whole organism, that is the child. So killing that whole embryo, even if it's just a zygote, like one cell, that is the destruction of a whole human being. So if someone like cuts off my finger, no, they didn't like murder me, but they did take off like parts of my body. So you gotta not confuse parts with holes. Child in the womb, you kill it, that's killing a whole human being. Cutting off like cells on my finger, that's just parts of me, parts of the whole. Okay, and I can see where that, where you would come from for that. But personally, in my opinion, if a being cannot exist outside or cannot live and function biologically outside of another human being, then it is not a living being yet. But it is it, not its own independent, like, thing separate from the woman it but is it, a si part okay of so the scientifically world. it is i think what you're arguing is that morally you don't consider it valuable because, because scientifically it is like a human being from the point of realization Within a human forward. being yes i understand that but it is a human being incapable of living as a human being and living as without the support of its mother right yes and then okay. you would argue child outside the womb can't yeah. live without the support of others either and i would also argue this you agreed that neglect laws are good right we need to have neglect laws if a mother like starves her one week old child yeah. to death that's murder. So parents have a moral obligation to provide a safe and healthy environment for their child to develop in. 
when does that happen? Okay, I argue that it happens from the moment of fertilization forward. My question to you would be, when do you think that moral obligation comes into play? After they are born, after they have left the woman's body. Why is that? And because, again, talking about viability, I think when the child is viable, it's morally gray area, so I'm not gonna talk about that, but like, before it is capable of functioning on its own, like if a mother were to give birth before viability, like that baby will die no matter how much like scientific wizardry you try to like use to keep it alive. If it is completely and entirely incapable of living on its own, even breathing on its own, eating on its own, then I would not consider that a I mean, there's some one with, there's some one week olds that can't breathe on their own or eat on their own. Like they're on a ventilator. You can't with, kill them. However, with the use of uh, technology, we are capable of keeping them alive. And that is why the viability line has been pushed earlier and earlier and earlier throughout the years because our technology has advanced and we've been able to keep kids alive earlier than they come out. The so, so real quick, um, you mentioned that you don't think parents have the moral obligation to provide a safe and healthy environment for their children to develop until they're born, correct? Yes. Okay. So if a mother takes a bunch of drugs, like let's say heroin, crack, cocaine, and the child comes out with no arms, no legs, did the mother do anything wrong? Uh, yeah. And I would also argue that so then if parents, a mother- Hang on. That, so then parents yeah. do have a moral obligation to provide a safe and healthy environment for their children to develop. Yes. Yes. Anyways, um, I would argue that like you would also be giving like, let's say, a, and this accounts for a very small portion of the population, of course, but let's say you're a 16 year old who is not capable, like they're in a poor financial situation. If you were to give birth to that child and carry that child all the way until birth, then you would just be putting that child into a case like where they wouldn't be able to function or, or not function, whether they wouldn't have the, they wouldn't be happy. They wouldn't be living a happy life. And oh. so forcing people to give birth to a kid when they are not capable of taking care of it, I believe is almost as wrong as messing up the fetus biologically through the use of nicotine, alcohol, weed, whatever. Well, there are many children who are already born that are in poverty circumstances, that are in you know horrible situations, but we shouldn't kill them. In the same way, if a child's going to be born in a situation like, situation like that, we shouldn't kill the child. The, we should alleviate suffering, right? We should try to prevent suffering as much as possible, but we shouldn't kill the people who are suffering. <laughs> but the baby isn't suffering. Yet. It's not capable of conceiving that it is suffering. Well, it is. I mean, it can feel pain at like a certain point during at development. At 24 weeks. And I'd argue that, and I'd argue this, I'd argue even if, even if someone can't feel anything, right? Let's say someone's in surgery and they're unconscious and they're like completely numbed with anesthetic, right? And someone goes in and like rapes them, okay? Even though they can't feel anything, that harm was still done to them and that's still wrong. So just because someone can't feel or experience something doesn't mean that the harm being done to them is morally okay. Correct. Lot, like not being conscious to experience things, but still having stuff done to you is wrong, obviously. But there's a difference between going unconscious while you were conscious and sentient before that and being an, an entirely non-sentient, unconscious being that has yet to form enough brain to become conscious. Well, I would say, I would say this, right? Let's say that the person has this harm done to them while they're in surgery, but then the person like kills them before they can wake up and like acknowledge that that pain's happened, right? That's mm -hmm. still wrong. I know you mentioned like having pre previous consciousness, co co consciousness in the past. Is that kind of the argument you're switching to now? Like if someone's had consciousness in the past, then they have value? I would say that, yeah, I would. Okay, so here's what I'd say to that. Um, are you a vegan? No. Okay, so you're not a vegan. So it's not actually consciousness that you're valuing because pigs are as conscious as three-year-olds. So it's not really consciousness. You'd have to argue for like human and union consciousness, right? It's that it's human consciousness, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so if you're arguing for human consciousness, well, I'd have to ask you to distinguish between human consciousness and pig consciousness. That's obviously a very difficult thing to do because we can't experience the consciousness of, of other animals. So then what I would say is if your argument's human consciousness, but you're not a vegan, so it's not really consciousness you're valuing, it's the humanity, right? So the human part is actually what's providing all the value there, mm -hmm. not the consciousness part. And to speak on where you said like you can't make a distinction between human consciousness and pig consciousness. I can certainly make a distinction between like myself. Like I would, in my own opinion, like I wasn't a conscious person until five years old, probably. Well, no, and you so were, you were conscious from like, so 20 to 24 weeks during development is like when you become conscious technically, just to clarify. So you would, you would have been conscious up to like five conscious, years old, but, but not when as conscious, I mean conscious as like other animals. Yeah, yeah. But like I have personally experienced that lack of sentience and like I was dropped on my head as a kid by my sisters and I have a big old dent in, my, in the side of my head that you can't see because I wear enough hair to cover it up. But 
Uh, I, it's not like I got upset with them for dropping me and causing like a permanent deformity in me because I wasn't around to perceive it and be able to perceive that they're doing something mean to me. And, they're and what, they did, me. what they did was wrong, right? Even though you weren't able to perceive it. Correct. Correct. So killing the child through abortion is wrong, even though they may not you know, be able to feel pain yet or they may not be conscious yet because you can still do harm to someone even though they can't perceive it. I don't think there's any more harm there's any harm that you can do this is this might be a long one but like i believe that it's not that morally wrong to hurt a fetus when you have no plan on giving birth to it and has no you have no plan on giving it life and allowing it to grow up so like before viability i would argue that it's not really that morally wrong if you're gonna like let's say you have an abortion schedule and like you have an appointment to take a pill and after like the 16th week, or you wouldn't take the pill after the 16th week, the like 12th week. 12th week, yeah. yeah. Uh, then I would say you can smoke and do whatever and because you're affecting something that isn't gonna be born. But when my sisters dropped me as a kid, I mean, obviously like I was a living person and I was gonna grow up to experience the side effects of their actions. So isn't that kind of convoluted logic though? Because you're saying it's okay to damage someone as long as you kill them before they can perceive that damage. So in the case of like the woman who's unconscious for surgery, right? It's okay to damage them as long as you kill them before they wake up. That's that's the logic kind of that you're using here. Uh, that is a pretty gross, like exaggeration. How so? Uh, because I consider there to be a big difference between a pre-viable baby, a pre -vi yeah, pre-viable baby, and a adult human being. What's the difference? Both are innocent human beings. I understand there's a difference in terms of stage of development, but both are innocent human beings, and both, in my opinion, should have the same right to life and right to not being harmed by bigger people. Right, and that's where you and I differ in opinions. I believe that a living being, a living independent being, is defined as somebody who can live on their own are, well, biologically function on their own, not live and thrive on their own, but biologically function on their own. With the support of their parents? Yeah. Which would be the child in the womb as well? Biolog biologically live. Well, like, it, say you were a baby dropped off and, like, and you had all the resources around you to live. Like, you would probably live. No. If you're a baby and you're, you have food around you and stuff, you're still probably going to die because you're a baby and you don't know, like, what food you can eat. Because babies can't eat, like, certain foods, right? Like some foods will like cause them to choke and die. Like babies choke a lot. Like you have to kind of watch them when they're eating. So like you put you can put a baby in like many situations, they're probably still gonna die. Even if you put like diapers and like food there, they'll yeah. probably still die. Because they need the support of their mother, just like the child in the womb needs the support of their mother. And if a mother doesn't provide that support to the born child or the unborn child, my argument is that that is murder. Because uh, it is. And then I don't think we will be able to come to a middle ground here because we have different definitions of what an independent human being is. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate you sitting down, Dan. Yep. Have a good day.